Hey guys, Boris Lossberg. Welcome to our view of the commodity dollars for the week of June 13th through the 17th. Also a lot of very interesting moves here from last week that, that is very much worth watching. And quite a lot of interesting event risk, certainly in the Australian dollar coming up. So let's take a look at the charts here first and see where everything stands as far as the uh, as the com dollars go. We'll start with the, Euro, with the Aussie because um, that's going to have the most amount of risk this week. The Aussie is, is, is really kind of an interesting um, play at this point. Oh, this, sorry, this is this the monthly list. <laughs> I was like wondering why, why we had such big moves. So the Aussie uh, this week clearly failed at the 75. The 75 was in the classic, classic technical analysis. Former support turned current resistance, and it was just sort of a classic failure at 75. We talked about the idea that 74, 75 was probably going to be the first true test of this of this Aussie recovery rally. And so far, clearly, clearly failed. If you if you're looking at the uh, at the charts here, you're forming a, a lower high in a pretty definitive way. 73 becomes a natural near term support here, but um, that's a very very short term support. I think the much more important support is going to be the 72, 71 zone. A lot of it is contingent, of of course, in some ways on the Australian employment data, which comes out on Wednesday. That's going to be the major event risk for the trade, along with risk appetite and everything else that's, that's kind of flowing into the market and the commodity prices everywhere else. As far as monetary policy, pretty clear the RBA has remained relatively hawkish in this, or relatively neutral, which in turn is interpreted by the market as hawkish, that they are not going to make any moves in the near, in the near term on um, cutting interest rates further, which was the big story for the last um, two weeks where we had the big uh, recovery in the Aussie. But I think that story has certainly run into a pretty serious wall of resistance at the 75s and needs probably some very strong fundamental underpinning in order to, to regain the move back up. In other words, the market kind of needs to be convinced that not only that there is not going to be any kind of a rate cut until September, but that the situation in Australia has stabilized enough that there won't be any rate cut probably till the end of the year, which would, could bring back the bulls. At this point, um, the upside trade, the bullish case, needs to have a close above 75 in order to really validate this move. For right now, looking at the charts, you have to treat this as a lower high failure, as a near-term downtrend, as basically a sell the rally at this point against the 75s. In, in order for the bulls to really convincingly beat the market, into submission, you need 75 taken out on a closing day basis. So for now, uh, you can short anywhere underneath 75, pretty much with impunity. And until and unless that's broken, um, the possibility or the probability uh, that Aussie starts to drift further lower is is quite much higher than it is to, for it to drift uh, drift higher. Of course, we have dollar uh, news on on FOMC as well. So one of the interesting things is is that you have to understand that Aussies sort of gotten all this carry trade flow on the assumption that the dollar is not going to raise rates. If there's even an inkling, a hint from the Fed that short term rates out of the U.S. could possibly get tight, tighter in July, that compresses the carry trade against the Aussie significantly and really puts much more downside pressure on uh, on the Aussie. So for now, the failure at 75 is a pretty clear sell signal, which allows you to short against this whole zone um, of 75s in the near term and possibly target, as I said initially, 73s and ultimately probably 72s to 71s. The, the, the very, very serious uh, support here really comes in at the 70, 71 level. That's the, the key level that Aussie holds. A super, super bearish development in the Aussie would break all of these um, levels at around 71.50. Um, and take us into a full unwind, perhaps to, to the uh, swing lows at 69. So that would be a very, very bearish case. But if you position yourself short over here, I think it's probably a relatively decent trade this week, given, given the chart formations and, and how everything is shaping up. Now, what's interesting here to me uh, on the other major commodity story, caddy. So dollar cat, we've had very strong oil prices. We've had very surprisingly strong Canadian employment data. And yet, to me, one of the more interesting signals here is that the Canadian dollar has actually weakened. One of the best trade setups that you get in Forex very often is positive fundamental news, negative technical news. If technicals are not confirming the fundamentals, you always go with the technicals. 
because that's the highest probability trade. So to me, what was fascinating about Friday is that we had strong Canadian data, and yet dollar CAD actually weakened. We ended on the highs of the day against the dollar. We're now making a higher low on dollar CAD. And this tells me there's a very legitimate and reasonable uh, trade perhaps here for a move back up, um, especially if we get any kind of weakness in the, in the oil prices that could just kind of tilt the pair down. Uh, getting this wrong to the, you know, to the long side, you could probably trade it with a very, very tight stop here uh, below... Let me just sort of let me bring up my um, my display data so we can all we can all look at this on a daily basis. So the lows here are around 2650. I guess yeah, I would say maybe 26. Sort of give yourself a little bit of a, a, a of a zone that as, you know as long as it doesn't break below 26, dollar cat dollar cat is a buy, meaning the Canadian dollar is a sell, and um, the turn back up to 30 could be a very real probability. This is one of the more interesting chart setups of the week. And Canadian dollar weakness um, against strong fundamentals is one of those kind of trades that sort of screams out at you um, on the near-term basis. So I like this trade. Um, you'd be wrong if it breaks around below 26. And of course, the ultimate low here is 25 as a support level. Um, the upside here, obviously the most the, the, the most um, recent upside here that, that caps the move is 130. But that's quite a decent move to the upside if you want to try and test this. Now, Kiwi dollar... Got a big boost last week off the RBNZ move. The RBNZ basically stayed stationary. The market seemed to be more surprised than not by the fact they were going to be stationary. That gave uh, Kiwi a big, big boost. But, and here's the thing, we're now starting to really unwind this trade in a big way. We talked about the fact that 71 um, or 70.50, you know, effectively, was a double top. We had a kind of a break above the, uh, the double top, and now it is possibly not getting confirmed in what to to me the interesting trade in the kiwi here is actually the short up to 7150 because if this is a failed breakout um and you can't get momentum back up above 7150 your, your risk here is only about 100 points on the short side if this is a failed breakout you know to the upside it really suggests the that the kiwi could unwind the move all the way down possibly to 69.50 as, as, as a near-term support level. And really, the, the longer term, the much firmer support at 68.50. If, if we sort of flip back this week and close, this is the critical thing, close above 71.50 on a closing basis, that would be a very strong bullish impulse. And, and, and I would cover the shorts um, and look then to try to get long on any kind of, on any kind of a dip, uh, dip lower. So right now, the Kiwi offers sort of an interesting... A relatively defined short-term uh, short trade, although we don't have that much, you know, we don't have that much uh, Kiwi data this week. It just simply would be an anti anti commodity trade, which we're seeing, of course, in the Aussie and, and the dollar cat as well. So the commodities are all getting unwound. If there is a drop in commodity prices, which just sort of pushes us down, we do have. I, I, I take it back. We do have one big thing, which is dairy prices. They've been relatively strong, so that could provide a little bit of support for us. But is it going to be enough support to take us above seventy one fifty? That's really going to be the critical the critical tell this week. There's a lot of Tremendous amount of cross flows, of course, this week because we have um, data out of Asia and we have the FOMC meeting as the key pivots for the week um, against Brexit being the you know the background for everybody. Uh, but to me, the fact that we sort of unwound all of these big breakouts by the end of the week last week could signal further weakness at least uh, in the first couple of days, uh, Monday, Tuesday of this week in commodity dollars, and that offers an opportunity to to short these uh, these trades and try to trade from more of the unwind to the downside as we go forward. So let's just take a look at the resistance points in the um, in the Aussie and dollar cat. So the Aussie, obviously the, the, the big resistance, my, my argument here is short everything against the 75 handle. And if it breaks above 75, then clearly the shorts are wrong. But I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the Aussie to break against 75. The near-term support is 73, and really it's sort of 72.50 as the um, uh, as a near term support in um, in Aussie further move to the downside the really really big support is uh, 7100 uh, I should probably just make this a bigger font to just show you that this is bigger support right maybe like we'll make this a 24 font and show you this is the big support that you want to work on dollar cad 
Um, the, the clear resistance is the 130. That's what you want to trade on the long side. I like dollar cap to the long side, as I said, because because of this this huge dichotomy between the fact that the technicals went one way, the fundamentals were the other way, and whenever technicals um, go opposite fundamentals, it's usually a trade that you want to take take into the technical direction. Support here, where we're wrong, absolutely is 126, and the hardcore, the just the absolute break. The backs of the uh, the bulls support um, of dollar cat bulls would be 125. So I'll make that also big. So you guys, oh maybe I should make it even bigger, so you can you can see that this is a really truly meaningful support. Make it 24. So there we go. Kiwi, um, same kind of a story, but sort of uh, more a more modest ranges. The 7150, very big resistance. And at this point, my argument again, short against this level. And see if we can survive. If you can survive any, any type of rally and it fails before 71.50, the very likely uh, probability here is that we're going to drift down to at least um, 69.50, and possibly the really big, big support here would be the 68.50 level. And that's how we wind up so far for this week with the commodity dollar trades as we go forward. So I wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading, and um, that's the commodity dollar trade for this week.